winning. Peace and love, family. Peace and love. It's your boy Chris Enlighten coming back again with some more spiritual vittles. And today I'm going in on offerings to the gods. Ooh, this is a good one, family. This is a good one. You know, I have a lot of people that watch this channel and they reach out to me and they ask me, what can I do to, to strengthen my connection with the gods? Now, you talk about the ancestors and giving them offerings a lot, but what do you do for the gods? It's simple. Anything you choose to. You know, when you burn ancestor money for your ancestors, it's because they need it. They need it. Again, when you burn the money, money just don't fall out the sky to them. It opens up doors of opportunity for the ancestors. That's what the money is for. The money is also a way for you to help aid them in erasing or diminishing their negative financial karma. Once you release enough of your ancestors' negative financial karma, you'll also in turn release yours. Because negative financial karma goes through the lineage. If you help your ancestors out, in turn they'll help you out. So you're actually helping yourself. I have something that represents me on my altar. I have a picture of me and I have this statue that, re that represents my higher self. So not only do I help my ancestors, I help myself. But the gods are a little different. It, again, there is no, there are no rules when it comes to your spiritual practices or your altar practices. You do as you see fit. I don't burn money for my ans for, for the deities because I don't feel as if they need the money. But if you want to give an offering of money, that's fine. Feel free. But these are the first three deities that I got on my altar. I had Tot, Oshun, and Lord Ganesha. So Tot was the first one. What I would do with Tot was, you know, he's the deity of writing, magic, and things like that. So what I did was I have a book on my altar where I write all like the spells I do, my thoughts, my dreams, and I keep that on my altar. I also offer him bread, water, and beer. He likes those things. He likes those things. So I put that on my altar as well. As well. I also wrote, created a pen out of a feather where I have some ink on the tip and I just act as if that's my writing tool. Although I don't really write with it, it's something that I created for taught. You know, because he liked things like that. He's the god of writing, math, and science and things like that. So I thought it would be good for me to put something like that on my altar for him. Again, you don't have to. I just have spiritual ingenuity. I like to create things. I like to do things on my own that I don't read anywhere else to help tether my connection with my ancestors. The second deity I got was Oshun. She's the goddess of beauty and magic as well. So I have a little mirror on my altar. She loves honey. She loves honey. I always taste the honey first read up on Oshun you figure out or you'll find out why I do that she loves cinnamon she loves flowers and she loves peacock feathers she loves peacock feathers and oranges I also have like I have cut up oranges on my altar for Oshun and I have this big beautiful peacock feather on my altar for Oshun she likes things like that Ganesha he loves peanuts bananas the biggest thing that I do for Ganesha is this. I say his mantra 108 times a day. 108 times a day. I created a video where I'm saying, Om Gong Om Dama, Om Gong 108 times for you all. So you can listen to me say it for the six minutes I say it, and you can get into the habit of saying it yourself. That's one of the things that tethered my connection strongest with Ganesha. I like to close my eyes and I think about Ganesha and I visualize him in my third eye and I visualize myself coming to him and asking him to help me out when I need him. Things like that. But the biggest thing you can do to strengthen your connection with the deities and the gods is consistency. Don't only go to your altar when you need something. Don't do that. Go to your altar daily. It's a ritual. It's a practice. And you want it to become you. You want it to be something that you do. Not something that I have to go, oh, I got to do my altar work. No one likes going to work. That's why I say my altar practices. Because I'm practicing and I'm practicing getting a stronger connection with these deities. Okay? Again, they're gods. They don't need anything from you. But when you put a statue of a deity on your altar, they get to see you taking care of your ancestors. 
your humility, um, being humble, you're being a servant, you're um, expressing gratitude and love for your ancestors, and their energy can use this vessel to look through this being to see you. That's why I put the deities on the altar, you know, and they can reside in their form and watch you. I have all my deities looking dead at me when I'm at my altar. Now, again, my ancestors, I have some Palo Santo, some sage. I, I have two big candles on the sides of my altar, and that's like my portal. So when I light my candle, I light my candle, it opens up the portal, and whatever I burn, whatever prayers, I pray and give right through that portal to my ancestors. Again, the altar is nothing more than a physical representation of your spirituality. There are no rules. There are some of you out there that can connect directly to the reservoir of consciousness that is the creator and get whatever you need. If that's working for you, by all means, keep doing that. But everyone isn't on that level yet. So I'm speaking to people on their level. In the beginning, just get your altar, take care of your ancestors. Just take care of your ancestors in the beginning. When you feel as if you establish a strong practice of connecting with your ancestors, get you a deity. Get one deity. Keep that deity on your altar for one month. One month. Establish a connection with that deity. If you choose to, get another deity. If you choose to, get another. There are no limits. There are no rules to what you can do with your altar. Uh, again, this page is just me sharing what I do to win. Okay? That's it. So feel free to take what you like and discard what you don't. But there are some people out here that I know and myself that are winning doing what I'm doing. So that's why I'm sharing this with you guys. I love you all and I want you to win. Again, consistency. Read up on the deity. Don't just get a deity and just do what you feel. Read up on their story. See if the story resonates with you. If the story resonates with you or you see an aspect of yourself within that story, story, by all means, purchase that deity and don't get no cheap deity. You know, get a nice bronze one if you can. The deities know what you have, okay? If you make it over six, six figures and you're getting plastic deities, me personally, I don't suggest you do that. You know, get something nice, get something timeless. Invest. When you invest in your spirituality, the universe recognizes you as a divine being. Okay? So on that note, I hope you got some jewels. I hope that answers some of your questions. Feel free to reach out to me. The Chris Enlightened at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you want me to do some videos about anything. I do want to give a sped out special shout out to a couple people that's been reaching out to me and supporting me. My man Caesar from New York. Peace and love. My niece, Maya. My mama, Emma. My nephew, Tony. And my little nephew, Chris. I love you all. So on that note, family, peace and love. Winning!